Hi, welcome back to our CHM YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for joining us here faithfully each and every week. We appreciate you joining us. Appreciate your comments. So thank you guys for joining us. And if this is your first time, then we say welcome to our CHM YouTube channel, which we also call Wednesday's Word. It is our heart and our, uh, our mission to share with you each and every Wednesday what God puts on our heart to share with you, his people. So if this is your first time, please make sure that you go ahead and uh, like, comment, and share. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. So you can be a part of what God is doing here regularly every Wednesday at our uh, CHM YouTube channel, which is also worship our Wednesday's Word. So thank you guys for joining us. Listen, we're going to go through our announcements of just reminders at this point. Just to remind you that coming up this Friday night, we're excited just in a couple of days, will be our next Worship and Word gathering. And as I said to you last week, this is a special youth edition where we are, um, really it's what God put on my heart about a year ago, where he wanted us to minister to the, the young people. And so I got with our youth pastor and Jayla, who's also one of our youth sponsors. And uh, we have been praying and fasting and putting this together. So we are excited about it uh, because it's the heart of God. So we want to invite you all to come out to that. Now, it is a special youth edition, but it's not at all limited to the youth. We will have our youth pastor, uh, Pastor A.T. Gatlin. He's going to be ministering the word. But when I say he can minister a word, not just for young people, he can minister a word to the body of Christ um, as a whole. So make sure you come out and join us. Um, Jayla's going to lead us in worship. She's been leading us in worship really all this year at our worship and word gatherings. And it is just, um, it's so beautiful how a, a sweet anointing God has put on her and just such an effortless way to enter into the presence of God. So we are grateful for her and her willingness to um, to minister at the Worship and Word Gathering. So we are excited about that. Now we do have something that is for the youth that's a special pizza party and a game and fun time we're gonna have at 6.30, that will be for the youth. And then we're gonna go into the worship service starting at seven. So please make sure that you come and bring your nieces, nephews, your children, grandchildren, come on out so we can actually minister to the entire family. Worship and Word is a place for hungry hearts and thirsty souls where we come to drink deeply of the presence of God. So make sure you join us there. Also coming up the end of September, um, September 30th through October 1st, I will be ministering at um, a women's retreat. It's Amens for Women's Ministry. And it's an opportunity for us to come together as women and be ministered to, to be strengthened, to be encouraged um, by God. Amen for Women's Ministry. It's actually a, a ministry that's led by Minister Bobby Hobson at World Overcomers Outreach Ministry Church. And actually, it's one of those ministries that get down in the trenches with God's people. Um, she's done everything from going to court with people to helping people find homes and housings and helping people in court. Number of things. It's true. Not just coming to church, but being the church in the community. So um, we're that's going to be October, uh, September 30th through October 1st. If you want to be a part of that, the flyer will be there that have the details and the information, whether you want to be part of the overnight retreat or if perhaps you just want to come on that Saturday and be with us all day long, there's a separate fee for that. And I will be ministering the word at one o'clock on Saturday afternoon. So make sure you check out that information. I would love to see you there. And then lastly, I just want to remind you, if you would like to have me to come out and minister um, to your women's ministry, to your congregation, um, at your ministry, whether you want me to come out and minister the word, come out in prayer, whatever it is um, that has to do with ministering the heart of God to the people of God. If you're interested in having me to do that, make sure you check, uh, send me an information on, on my email, which is sinhortmen at gmail.com. Again, that's C-Y-N-H-O-R-T-M-I-N at gmail.com. And I'll be glad to look into that information, okay? So let's go ahead and get started in our word. Um, we've been going over the last couple of weeks talking about how God comes um, to defend his people. We talked a couple of weeks ago, we talked about God saying, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And God showed us how he does that. Last week, we went into looking into um, some of the ways that God really comes 
to bear and how he fights for his people. We looked at Exodus chapter 14, how God came to fight for his children after he had worked many miracles and had them to be released from Egypt, from bondage in Egypt. And then after Pharaoh agreed to let them go, then at some point afterwards, his heart became hardened. And he decided that he was going to go back and get God's people. Well, God actually set a trap for Pharaoh. And the very thing that God did, the very miracle that he performed to get his people free was the same thing that he used as a weapon against his enemies. And as it turned out, God destroyed their enemies that very day, just like he said that he would through Moses. And so as I was seeking the Lord about what he wanted me to share with you all this week, and he was just showing me and ministering in my heart how so many of his people are misinterpreting or misunderstanding him. They're either misinterpreting what he's saying and doing, or they're simply misunderstanding him. And a lot of it, when we don't know the heart of God, then we misinterpret things that are happening around us. And what he was showing me is a lot of people are saying, um, well, I've been waiting on God. God said this was going to happen or that was going to happen. And I've been waiting and it hadn't happened. Where are all these miracles? Where are all the things that God promised? Why haven't they happened yet? And not only are they not happening, but the exact opposite is happening. And so what the Lord wanted me to share with you all today, he took me to a passage of scripture in the book of Judges, Judges chapter six. And this is talking about Gideon. Gideon was one of the judges and the judges had a role in that time because they didn't have kings. And so judges were the leader of that time. And judges role were to unite the people and to encourage them to stand in victory against the enemies of God. And so what happened here in, Mid in, in Gideon's time, um, God's people were being oppressed by the Midianites. And so they were crying out to God for a deliverer to be released from their bondage. So in Judges chapter 6, starting at verse 12, it says this is where Gideon actually was. He was um, threshing wheat. But normally when you're threshing wheat, you're threshing it on the threshing floor, which is out in the open. And where you're beating the wheat and throwing it up in the air and the wind blows and it separates the chaff, which is just the empty husk. And then the grain or the part that you use for bread is what falls to the ground. But Gideon wasn't threshing wheat on the threshing floor. Instead, he was threshing wheat in a wine press. So he was doing the right thing, but he was doing it in the wrong place. And he was doing that because he was hiding. The Midianites were oppressing God's people they were coming in and not only were they stealing their crops, every time they had a harvest to come in, the Midianites would come in and they would steal that harvest to where God's people wouldn't be able to use it. And whatever they didn't steal, the scripture said they would just purposely destroy it. Now, doesn't that sound a lot like the enemy we talked about a couple of weeks ago in John 10, 10? That thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Whatever they couldn't steal, they would just simply destroy it so God's people wouldn't be able to use it. And so in, in chapter 6, starting at verse 12, is where we're going to pick up reading. And this is when God came to speak to Gideon. So the messenger of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said, The Lord is with you, brave man. And so Gideon's response was, Excuse me, sir? But if the Lord is with us, he said, Why has all of this happened to us? Now, I know many of people have been saying that same thing. Why, if God is with us, why has all of these things happened? Why have we had all of these losses? Why we have all of this tragedy? Why is all of these things happening? I want to read to you, going back up to verse one in that same chapter. And it says, verse one of chapter six says, the people of Israel did what the Lord considered evil. So the Lord handed them over to the Midian for seven years. Now they were living the consequences of their own poor choices. They were living the consequences of their own, own poor decision. Remember, some months back, we talked about whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. And so they were in bondage and under oppression of the Midianites because they had turned their back on God. They didn't have a physical king at that time. God was their king. He was their ruler. And they had, just as the scripture said, they had done what was evil in God's eyes. And so they were simply living out the consequences of their own decisions and their own choices. But God didn't leave them there. He was coming now in response to their, choir, uh, to their cries. And so Gideon goes on to say, 
um, if, if God was with us, then where did all, why are we in this shape? He goes on to say, where are all of the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and he has handed us over to the Midian. God didn't abandon them. It was their consequences. God didn't just arbitrarily hand them over. It was their consequences from the decision that they made. And God had told them, you're going to be there for seven years. So they had dealt with the oppression of the enemy, the Midianites, for those seven years. And they cried out to God. And God, being a faithful and loving God, he showed up on the scene in response to their cries. And he'll do the same thing for you today. If you know you're in a situation that is of your own making, all you have to do is cry out to God. He will hear and he will answer your cry. He will hear and answer your plea. And so verse 14 goes on to say, the Lord turned to him and said, now Gideon is saying, this is an angel that God sent to Gideon and is complaining about if God is with me, why in the world are we dealing with all of this? And where are the miracles we heard so much about? And you know, sometimes we feel that way because I've heard of many miracles. I heard of the Brownsville revival and all of these things. I've heard of the jewels showing up and the gold dust showing up on people. I've heard of people coming up out of the great Lord. Where are those miracles? Where are those things now? We know you're able to do it. It's written in your word. Where are the miracles now? But it goes on to say, the Lord turned to Gideon and said, you will rescue Israel from the Midianites. You will rescue them with the strength you have. He said, I am sending you. Gideon was complaining and mad about where he was. And God has sent him to be the answer to his own prayer. And I wonder, are you blaming God for not doing what he's called you to do? There are times where God steps in and he completely handles the battle all by himself. But then there are times where God is looking to you to do what he's called you to do. And what I've come to learn just over my time of living and serving God, the thing that bothers you the most, that thing that vexes your spirit to mo the most is that very thing you're supposed to make a difference in. That thing that angers you, frustr frustrates you, that thing that bothers you the very most is the thing that you're supposed to make a difference in. Just like Gideon, he's, when, he's threshing wheat in the wine press and complaining because they're in bondage. And God said, no, 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 you are the one that's going to deliver Israel. I have given you the strength that you need to do it. So make sure that we're not complaining to God because he's not doing what he's called us to do. He called Gideon to do a certain thing and Gideon was complaining because God wasn't doing it. So Gideon's response, and here's why many of us don't step out. The same kind of response that Gideon had. Gideon said to him, excuse me, sir, how can I rescue Israel? Look at my whole family. It's the weakest one in Manasseh, he says. And me, I'm the least important member of my whole family. Gideon felt like he didn't have what it took to deliver Israel. He didn't feel like he was even enough to do what God had called him to do. But God had already told him, you have the strength. God put in us everything we need, everything we need in order to live out the purpose, the destiny, and the calling of our life in the earth. So we're not waiting on God to give us something else or to say something else or to do. It's in us. And we simply have to believe God as Gideon did and step out by faith. So Gideon was given all the reasons why he wasn't able to do what God called him to do. Just like Moses, when God told Moses to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let his people go, Moses gave God all of these reasons why he wasn't good enough, why he wasn't able to do it, his stammering speech and all of that. And God's like, did I not make your mouth? I know you. I know what you have in you. And many of the times we don't know what's in us. And, from, and out of fear, we don't want to step out to find out what God has put in us. But if he's telling us to do a thing, it's only because he knows that we have already in us what we need to do. So God's response to Gideon in verse 16, God says, the Lord replied to him and said, I will be with you. You will defeat Midian as if they were only one man. Now this was a massive army. And God told Gideon, you're going to defeat him as if he was only one man. And so I just want to say to you today, God is... Probably, there are things God will do himself. 
But there are some things he's waiting on you to step out. Because what we'll find out, if you go to, you can find that story of Gideon in Judges chapter 6, 7, and 8. I strongly encourage you to read it. It's, it's a, a very encouraging story where the underdog winds up on top, where the last become first and the first becomes last. They, they had a large army, the Midianites. They were massive. And it wasn't just them. There were other people that joined them to come against little old Israel. But God called Gideon, who was the weakest one, the least one in a weaker tribe. So that's how he saw himself. But God saw him as a mighty warrior, which is how he addressed him when he showed up. He said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. The Lord is with you, mighty man. And many of us, we may not feel like we have everything it takes. I don't always feel like I have everything it takes to do what God has called me to do. I go through putting these messages together all the time. I'm going back and forth with God. But one thing I do, I know he's called me to do it. And so I step out and I do it. If you really only knew the notes that were on this page, you would probably laugh because it's flowing out of me like a river. But I promise you it's not all on this page. But I have walked with God enough to know he's called me to do it. And even if I only have a couple of scriptures on this page, when I open my mouth, the spirit of God, the river of God in me is going to begin to flow. And it is him that's speaking and ministering to you. So when we step out and trust God like Gideon did, the end result is God, Gideon was able to be victorious and to deliver Israel out of bondage and out of oppression under the Midianites. So much so that his name showed up in Hebrews 11, which is the hall of faith. Where they talk about all of the many things that were done by faith, Gideon made it. He made it into that passage of scripture because he stepped out on faith. It wasn't because he was so confident in himself. We see what he thought of himself. He felt like he was the least one in a weak tribe. But because he took God at his word, he was able to deliver Israel out of bondage and out of oppression because he trusted the God who sent him. And so I want to encourage you today, if you will, but trust God, whatever it is, start that business, start that ministry, write that book, whatever it is God is in your heart to do, because you don't know how that's connected to your answer. You don't know how your breakthrough is coming if you step out. As Gideon stepped out, God used him. First, he had 22,000. God took him down to 10,000, and then he reduced him to 300 because he wanted him to know and all of Israel to know that Gideon didn't win this battle on his own. It was the God who sent him in his own strength. So I want you to be encouraged and step out. You're looking for the miracles, but I believe the miracles are going to occur as you step out and obey God, even in the very thing that's frustrating you the most. Amen. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne of grace. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity to minister your word to the hearts of your people. God, I thank you that in this season, God, you have answered many times you've answered. And you've stepped in and you have worked miracles by the strength of your own mighty right hand. But God, there are times where you seek to partner with your people. And Father, just like Gideon was born to be the deliverer of Israel, he was born to be the answer to his own prayer. As his people cried out for a deliverer, Gideon, who felt the least um, prepared, was the one you had chosen. So God, I pray your people will be encouraged now that no matter what it looks like, no matter what, how they may feel about themselves, that the strength comes in the God who sent them. And if they will, but by faith, step out, God, in believing you, Lord, you will see to it that they will be victorious in what it is you've called them to do. Lord, that they won't continue to blame you because you're not doing what you called them to do. God, that we won't blame you because we're not doing what you called us to do. God, that I won't blame you because I'm not doing what you called me to do. But God, grant your people the grace and the strength, God. Work in your people the will, the desire, and the actual doing of what you called us to do. Father, that your glory will be revealed in the earth, that your power will be made known, that your name, God, will be made great. And Father, we thank you for partnering with us, God, for your glory to be revealed. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is already done in heaven. In Jesus' matchless and mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Listen, thank you guys so much for joining us again. I'm looking to see you on Friday night, 7 o'clock p.m., 8200 Macon Road. We'll see you guys back here next week. Shalom.